If you told me a week ago that I was gonna have a cruise cancelled, I would have believed you. We're pretty used to it by now. But if you told me that it was gonna be this cruise, I'm not sure that I would have. The circumstances around this cruise being cancelled are less than normal, but I think we're gonna see a lot more cancellations like this going forward all the way around the world. At the start of the year, it was that time when it's rainy, it's dark, the days are really short, and I really wanted something to look forward to. At that point, I hadn't seen my family for a couple of months, and I still haven't, thanks to a lockdown here in the UK. So I thought it would be a good idea for us to have something to look forward to, something where we could spend some really good quality time together to kind of recharge after the last year. I spent a lot of time looking at cruises. If you're anything like me, you'll probably enjoy looking at and booking cruises, almost as much as you do going on the cruise. I love that planning process and I spent a lot of time planning this cruise. I eventually decided on booking a princess cruise for a variety of reasons. I've cruised with princess before and I really like them. They also have a lot of really good cruise technology that I think is gonna make it really easy for us to cruise with COVID going forwards. I thought I was being so smart when I booked this cruise because I booked a British Isles cruise for the end of summer. My thoughts at that time was that I think we're gonna see cruises from the UK by the end of summer and hopefully into America probably a little bit later than that, but we're planning on having everybody vaccinated here in the UK by the end of summer. So I thought that's a good sign. We'll be cruising hopefully by the end of August and that's when I booked the cruise for. I wanted to maximize my chances of this cruise going ahead. So I thought, where will cruises start up? And we've seen across in Europe, we've seen cruises from Germany, from Italy. And what they do there is they do kind of local cruises, cruises to nowhere with people who are only from that country. That seems to be how countries do get started with cruising again. So I was fully expecting that the first cruises to go from the UK would just be British Isles cruises. I think that makes so much sense. It is more difficult when you have a look at America because in America you can't do a cruise to nowhere. Here in the UK there's no reason why we couldn't just float out to sea for three or four days and then come back and I honestly would be quite happy with that right now. In the US, US law prevents you from doing that. You have to stop at a foreign port. There's various things going on in the US to try and get around that, to try and get everybody back cruising, but I think it's just gonna take a little bit more time for the US to get back cruising compared to us here in the UK. And loads of Europe is already cruising they're way ahead of us. That said, this cancellation and what they've done here, I think we're gonna see right the way across the world. I think this is how things are gonna be from the US, from Australia, everywhere. I think this is laying the foundation for our return to cruising. I found a really good price for this cruise for a 12 night cruise, including all of the fees and taxes. It was around a thousand pounds, which is $1,400. So just over a hundred dollars per night for a princess cruise on a new ship on the Sky Princess. I thought that was fantastic. I booked it through the agency that I work with through my agent also called Emma. And I was very happy with that. The deposit was only 50 pounds. So I thought, what's the worst that can happen? It, it did happen. <laughs> You can imagine my surprise then when I got all of these messages a couple of days ago saying that my cruise was cancelled because Princess Cruises were cancelling British Isles cruises to make way for British Isles cruises. I totally understand it, but when I first saw that news come out, I was crossing my fingers and I was really hoping that my British Isles cruise would survive the cut. P&O Cruises and Princess Cruises here from the UK have both cancelled pretty much their summer season and have decided to change from doing international cruises to British Isles cruises. I wouldn't be surprised if that follows all over the world if you see cruises from the US that are cancelled, international cruises cancelled, replaced by smaller itineraries with limited people on there. The British Isles cruises that are sailing for P&O and Princess from the UK will only be allowed to have British people on them and I suspect we'll see the same thing in the beginning in places like the US. So you may be able to have a Caribbean cruise that visits maybe just Mexico or a few limited places from the US and at the beginning that cruise may only be able to have US passengers on it. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. That's happened all over Europe so far and it does seem to be the way to go, it makes sense. 
Princess Cruises have cancelled their cruises on Sky, Regal and Island Princess until the end of September to make way for these new itineraries. At the moment, we don't know if these new itineraries will have any port stops. The itineraries haven't come out yet, but I'm eagerly awaiting them. I'm definitely going to have a look and book one of these short itineraries when they do come out. But of course, I still have the issue of what to do with my main cruise. I have made a decision and it saved me, I think, almost a thousand dollars, but we'll get to that in a second. At the moment, we have no idea what the prices will be like. It's very strange. We don't really have any precedent of this type of cruises, but the options given to me were either to shift the cruise to 2022, to take a future cruise credit with 110% value, or to take a full refund. I have until April time to decide on this. So they have given us quite a while to think about it. And if I haven't told them by that time, the option will just default to that future cruise credit. The cruise that I booked was on board Sky Princess, which is one of the biggest and newest and most exciting cruise ships for Princess Cruises. And the itinerary is being replaced by Crown Princess. I have been on Crown Princess just for a ship tour and she's amazing. She's a great ship, don't get me wrong, but it's not as big and exciting as the Sky Princess. I find the Princess Cruises fleet to be very consistent. Once you've cruised on one Princess ship, you'll feel pretty much at home on all of the others. So I'm happy to cruise on any Princess cruise. And I'm happy to say that I have gone with that option for a variety of reasons. The main one being the price. The price that I paid for this 12 night cruise was £1,000, $1,400. And if I was to rebook this cruise, just just rebook it, forgetting my old cruise as a new person, book the same cruise in 2022. You're looking at £1,700, which is $2,400. So I've saved pretty much $1,000 by rebooking as opposed to booking as a new person. I'm glad that I did decide to stick with Princess after I put in so much effort to decide on a cruise line. Watch this video next because that talks about how I made this decision and why I think that the Princess Cruises technology is better than any other. Spoiler alert, I did choose Princess, but still, there's some good contenders in there. 